Yo, what up beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. Sorry for being gone for so long, but hey, I'm back now. Today we're going to be doing a long requested video. We are going to be going over my beat, Comet. But I didn't want this video to just be another breakdown. I wanted to be able to teach you something too. Since this is a Travis Scott type beat, I will also use this as an opportunity to teach you about what I think goes into making a good beat for Travis Scott. A Travis Scott-esque type beat, if you will. Drop a comment below letting me know if you'd like to see more Travis Scott related tutorial content, or if you'd like to see another artist. I'll see what I can cook up for y'all. Comet is actually one of my favorite beats that I've made this year. So thank you guys so much for convincing me to get off my lazy ass to make this video. Enjoy. So this beat starts off with the sample. This piece was composed by my boy and absolute melodic deity, Dude Clay. His work is incredible and truly speaks for itself. He is also an insanely trippy graphic designer. I'll drop his information in the description below so you can learn more about him if you're interested. Once I heard this sample, I just felt this jolt of like fucking creative energy. It was orgasmic to be completely honest with you. I knew I wanted to convey an ominous feeling of existential dread, kind of like on Travis Scott's Rodeo Project. Most of the songs on Rodeo range from tempos 115 to 150 BPM, but the deeper, darker songs such as Pornography and I Can Tell are at the lower ends of this spectrum. Since that's what I was aiming for, I slowed Clay's melody down from its original 140 BPM to 122 BPM. And this is when I started to get that stank face. I slapped on some retro color, some ozone for EQ, and some Valhalla for reverb. Once I had my melody sounding the way I wanted it to, it was time to get to work on my intro. Travis Scott's beats often have interesting synth breakdowns and progressions. This is actually one of the most notable qualities of his style. Here is how I emulated that in this beat. You can easily make something similar by following the steps I used. The first step was the sub bass, which has two parts to its pattern. Here is part one. And here is part two. To give the bass even more energy, I added some Camel Crusher and made an automation clip where the distortion increases over the first 8 bars of the intro before maxing out during the second 8 bar phase. added two drum loops from the Wonder Girl kit on Splice, this one which plays evenly throughout the intro, and this one which starts off silently and then increases in volume via a volume automation clip. To 
together, the drum loops and sub bass sound like this. last part of this intro was the synth layer, and this is my favorite part. It comes in during the second 8 bars of the intro, and I use it to accent the bass line. Let me show you what I mean. Here's how the synth sounds like on its own. what it sounds like layered with the bass. That extra oomph is like everything to me, man. Shit is beautiful. Okay, now we can move on to the drums. I started with this 808 pattern, which similar to the sub bass in the intro also has two parts. Here is part one. And here is part two. I constructed this kick snare pattern to be the base of the drum sequence. I created these two secondary snare patterns so that they could accent the kick and main snare. Then I created this hi-hat pattern. I actually added a panning automation clip to this pattern to create more dynamic energy in my beat. I also had this second hi-hat play a basic two-step pattern in the background. Lastly, is this open hat pattern I made. It's just a stutter glitch that hits on every other snare. It's not something that I had ever done before, but it seemed unique and sounded hard as fuck, so I went for it. Oh, and there's also this little coin sound effect that plays on the fifth clap out of eight in the eight bar loop. It's me, Mario. So here's how the whole drum pattern sounds like together. Okay, so that actually about covers it, but there are a few more cool things about this beat that I wanted to show you guys. First, there's this drum fill that happens occasionally at the end of an 8-bar sequence. There are also these two risers that I use almost every 8 bars in order to signal a transition in arrangement. Lastly, there's this really cool sword sound effect that I use in some parts of the beat. 
Again, this is done to signal transition. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Let me know if you enjoyed this breakdown and would want more. Definitely let me know ways that I can improve this series. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos from now on, so I really need you guys' help with content ideas. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a breakdown or tutorial. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and always be creating. Just make sure it's dope content only. Peace. You thought I would forget, but I didn't. I told y'all, I'm on top of shit now. Major congrats to the winners of the Noah Mejia Dope Content Only Beat Battle. The first winner is Moly Beats. Here's their beat playing right now. The second winner is Arid Beats. Here's their beat. Both of you have won $50 and one wave supply kit of your choice. Shoot me an email ASAP to claim your prize. And of course, huge shout out to Saxon Beats. They are the winner of the Amber Pop-Up Beat Battle that I did a while ago on my email list. Here's their insane beat. I'll be doing beat battles every week from now on, and I'll announce the winners at the end of these tutorial videos, which will be dropping every Thursday from here on out. If you never want to miss a beat battle again, join my email list. You can learn more about that in the description below. See you next week.